Hey guys, uh, I just want to give uh, do a little overview on my system now that I've gotten it pretty much where I want it. All the way down at the end, of course, is my old faithful. That's my 400 watt Winmax turbine. Not getting much right now, um, but uh, it helps. It helps. Um, down over here uh, on this rack, I've got my in phase. These are my big panels. I'll just get a little closer. These are 220, 225 watt panels, um, and these are permanently grid tied. Oh, there goes, there goes my turbine. She's cranking now. That's the ocean out there. Um, so I get a pretty good wind off it, and it's not too dirty either because uh, I'm higher up than most of the houses, as you can see. Uh, anyway, back to uh, the overview. So down here we've got the. Uh, these panels here and as I said these are permanently grid tied through the end phase so these are 24 volt panels and they're converted or inverted I should say from 24 volt DC to 240 volt AC right at the panel level and then they feed in through that junction box um, and they go through that conduit and they directly grid tie into my main electrical panel. So it's permanently grid tied. It's great. They're highly efficient. The system, this uh, the end phase system here, these inverters are 96 or 97 percent efficient. So they're great. The only, the only problem with it is um, they lack the flexibility in other words, I can only grid tie these things. Um, if the grid power went down, these things aren't going to produce without getting into some complicated uh, setups. So you're kind of screwed um, if the grid did go down. Um, so how are you going to run? You're not going to run because these babies are going to shut off because when they don't sense grid power, they're done. They, they shut off. Uh, and that's, that's to protect the linemen. The guy's working on those lines out there. So, uh, anyway. Um, now, that's why, part of the reason why I've got these other panels here. These are the Kiyosura 140-watt panels. Actually, some of them are 135s, and those two out there are 140s. These guys are 12-volt, all 12-volt. And these guys uh, give me the flexibility, the way I wired these up, where I could um, grid tie them if I want, through a plug-in grid tie inverter, which I'll show you in a minute, or I can direct the power to go to the battery bank. Similarly, on my wind turbine, I can set that to grid tie, or I could go um, hybrid and have it charge the battery bank and run off my battery bank if we had a power outage. But this way, I keep these guys grid tied, and I'll show you downstairs in a minute. Here in my room, uh, I think I've showed this in other videos, but I've mounted um, the trimetric, um, which allows me to, um, it's like a gauge for your battery bank. It allows you to track a lot of different things um, on your battery bank. Okay, now I'm downstairs in the garage. On those big panels, um, the ones that are permanently grid tied on the end phase system, those are not have nothing to do with this board because, as I said, they're just permanently grid tied. They're feeding my grid right now at probably putting in a hundred, probably putting in 1.3 kilowatts an hour right now, and um, I can monitor that through my computer if I want to. But I know that's that's coming in. There's nothing I I can do with that though, and that's why I got those. Um, I designed my system with the other panels, the Kyoceras, and that wind turbine to be flexible. So with those, I can decide how I want to send my power. I can just grid tie it like I have those end phase and just run back my meter. But I like to be able to operate without the grid if something happened to the grid, like an earthquake or something like that. So anyway, so with um, we'll talk about the wind first. The wind um, turbine is comes in um, three phase through this uh, braking mechanism comes through that wire three phase this rectifier rectifies it to um, DC runs through the breaker um, and this switch here I've shown in another video this controls my wind so right now it's in position two so 
all my wind is just going to go directly through this grid tie inverter and be grid tied. If I wanted, I could send it to position one and go to the battery. But right now, these are the watts <clears throat> that are coming off that wind turbine. Not, <laughs> not much because it's not, the wind's not really good today. It's gusty. When it was cranking up there for a minute up when I was up on the roof, it was probably like what you're seeing now, about 20-something watts. But it's the wind's not very good. But anyway, I just keep it in a grid type position. But if I needed to, if the grid failed, um, <clears throat> I can just flick this switch, go through this charge controller, charge my battery bank, and I can run off that battery bank. Um, and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. Same with the solar. The solar is right now being uh, charging my batteries, um, and I am. Uh, this is my Flex Max out back. It's an awesome charge controller. But with my solar, I'm going to take that now and I'm going to send that to this plug-in grid tie inverter. Like I said, it's not nearly as efficient as the. Uh, end phase. The end phase is about 96%, 97%. These suckers, these plug-in grid ties are probably 80%. Um, anyway, you'll see the solar coming in now off those panels through here. It's going to take a while for it to kick all the way up. Um, but anyway, I can. Um, I usually will keep my solar and my wind in the grid tie position. So that way, they're just constantly rolling back my meter, just like my end phase does. And then if I ever needed to run off the batteries, which I'll show you in a moment, um, I can do that. So basically, it's still going. I don't know what I'm getting right now. Probably 500 watts. Um, anyway, so now let me show you something new. Um, this guy here is a Reliance Transfer Switch. Um, before I even talk about what this is, um, if the power went out and I needed to run, I could run off my battery bank, as I mentioned before. Um, I could always keep, I could always charge my battery bank, as I said, by directing where my solar and my wind power goes. All I got to do is put it in position one, and the solar and the wind on that hybrid part of my system will just feed all that power and charge the battery banks. The wind will go through this wind charge controller to do it. The solar will go through the flex max and uh, charge my battery. Now that the batteries are charged, how do you run off them? These are 12 volt batteries and your most houses don't run 12 volt DC. So you use an inverter for the batteries. Um, and this is the one I have. This is the Ames Pure Sine Wave Inverter. And this is going to invert my 12 volt battery bank to 120 volt um, volt AC. So that will do it. Now, how do you get the power? Obviously, if I plug into this thing, I can run in the, anything I want in the house, but you don't want a million plugs all over your house or extension cords. So how do you, how do you get it so it'll power up your circuits in your house? Well, that's where this guy comes in. Got this for about $150. So Right now, um, I've wired this uh, transfer switch to a sub-panel in my house that powers the three most critical circuits of my house. Um, right now, the line position shows you that you're running off the city power. And of course, I'm feeding the city power with my solar and my wind right now because it's grid-tied. But, um, but if, that, if the power went out and you couldn't run off the city, all I'd have to do is take these switches and flip them. And I'm going to do it right now. This is circuit A. Oh, wait. First, I've got to turn on my charge. Well, I could do it upstairs. Okay. So I'm going to flip these circuits A, B, C. Now, I'm going to go upstairs and... Okay. Well, first, I'm going to show you what it's going to run. It's going to run... All of the recessed lighting in the kitchen and in this living room area, it's going to run that um, fan, ceiling fan. It's going to run the lighting and everything in this bathroom in here. And, very importantly, 
that's going to run this refrigerator, which is dead right now. Looks like there's lights, but that's just a reflection here. You can see it's out. Now, it's also going to run those, those three circuits, the recessed in here, this light, in my stairwell, which is an important one. And then downstairs in my daughter's room, um, all of her room will be run off these three circuits. Um, this outlet will be, low, will be run off that, those three circuits. And this light in my bedroom, that light in my bedroom, and what else? Um, and that outlet. So, the reason why it's not on, you saw me flip the switch. It's not running right now because my inverter is turned off. All I have to do is now turn on my inverter. Right now you see the load, which is negative 6 watts coming off my battery bank. I'm going to click this on. This is the remote control they give you with the um, Ames Pure Sign. When I turn this on, it's going to... It's going to now um, turn on my inverter, and it's going to, my inverter is going to feed my, those three circuits in my house. I turn it on. You can see, oh, there comes one light. There it comes, oh, maybe I turned that light off. That light was on, and I shut it off. This is all being run off my battery bank. That, wow, I'm at 500 watts right now. You can see, five, almost 500 watts. Is being powered. Let's up. Oh, there's the ceiling fan. Now that's on. There's the light down there in the hallway. It's in another important one. There's the recess lighting everywhere. The bathroom light, you can see that's on. And most importantly, or as importantly, the refrigerator. So I'm now running everything I want in this house and downstairs in my daughter's room off of those three circuits. So that's what that box allows me to do.